Uh, not just defenders, but I think in all positions, we need more height and physicality yes. across the team. We know that last season we were a very small team compared to our opposition and we had lacked that physicality, which is another factor that got us relegated. So... So welcome back to Small Heath Alliance FC. And as you know, Blues fans, there's a lot happening at the club at the moment. Uh, last week, we had the season tickets available for renewal. We had the new kit release and uh, we've got our new manager, Chris Davis. And I'm sure the next step for Blues fans is thinking, who are we going to sign? You know, the transfer market opened at the time of recording last Friday. So we are now available to approach teams, approach players. So me and dad are going to go through this video and we haven't discussed this prior and just go through the team, uh, you know, from goalkeeper all the way up to attack and talk about the types of players that we think we need to bring into the squad this season to prepare us uh, for our next season in League One. So, Dad, over to you. What are your thoughts on the transfer window and what kind of players you think Blues should be looking to bring in this summer? Well, before we get into it, Matt, uh, as you probably know and Blues fans are aware of some really sad news we've heard over the last few days about the passing of Matija Sarcic, our previous goalkeeper on loan. Um, really yeah. devastating news. 26 years old. Um, a really respected player in as much as I think he played about 26 games for the Blues. Uh, but but he's remembered fondly, always people speaking about him. Um, and to hear that he's passed away at the age of 26, absolutely devastating. So uh, I'm sure you and the Blues fans would like to express their condolences to his family, his friends and everybody at Millwall FC uh, as well for his uh, his passing. Uh, you know, a real, real sad loss and somebody that, uh, you know, we've spoken about before about at some point trying to get back yeah. to the club. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, heartbreaking news. But, um, yeah. you know, we, we thought we uh, needed to um, acknowledge that uh, during our yeah. podcast. I mean, what a player. I mean, all I've been reading over Twitter is he was destined for the Premier League. He was destined for bigger things. Yeah. And we saw it, didn't we, when he was at the Blues. What a keeper. Fantastic yeah. talent. And the fact he was only here for 20, 26 games, I think you just said, and he won player of the season speaks volumes of I think how... he got injured around about Christmas yeah. time and but it then... just shows how much of a high quality a yeah. player he actually was yeah. brilliant player such, 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 such 26 loss. tragic loss yeah, and, yeah. and also Kevin Campbell as well another footballer a really sad weekend for football this weekend but of course for a Sarcic um, you know, yeah. it really sort of hit me deep when I sort of read that news at the weekend. Really, really yeah. sad loss. Yeah, but I couldn't believe it. But yeah. um, anyway, back to um, the purpose of the uh, of the content of the video. Yeah. Um, so um, obviously, the transfer window is really important. We all know that. We've all known for some time that this transfer window. Um, for Birmingham City is going to be a big one because of the amount of players that have been released, the ones that uh, the loan players have gone back. I'd uh, say it's the biggest transfer window in decades. I think so. It's a bit of a tricky one though, isn't it, Matt? Because, you know, we're in League One now and uh, that's not what we wanted when we came into this transfer window. But it's the reality of where we are. We're nothing we can do about it. Um, and that isn't going to, it's likely to impact on the type of players that we would potentially target and who want to come to us as well. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know about what you think about this, Matt, but I thought we'd just go through the various um, key positions in the in the team and mm -hmm. discuss what we think we need, uh, starting off with uh, with goalkeepers. So uh, what do you think about, uh, what do we need in terms of uh, goalkeepers in the transfer window? Well, interesting. I don't think Ruddy's going to renew his contract. So I think we are actually going to see two goalkeepers come through the gates this summer. I really do. Is that is and that a personal opinion? That's a personal opinion. You haven't, you haven't, haven't heard, no, okay. sorry, yeah, haven't heard anything. Yeah, yeah. That is pure my opinion off yeah. the back of his podcast, off the back yeah. of everything that's going on. I don't think Ruddy will renew. And even if he did renew, yeah. I still think we're going to see a new goalkeeper come through the gates. And I think we need someone young. We need yeah. someone progressive. We need someone with much better distribution. Yeah. And we need someone who's confident on the ball. And Ruddy put his hand up and said this on the podcast when Rooney was in charge he wasn't capable of playing that kind of football uh, and we need a keeper who's confident in doing that and we need someone who's going to keep, keep clean sheets you know a 40% uh, above 40% or above yeah. clean sheet ratio is a really impressive mark to hit for the season and because we're in league one I just want to quickly if you don't mind so uh, Please, yeah. last season uh, the top statistical goalkeeper was Joe Waldsmith from Derby. He had 20 clean sheets with a 50% record. Lucas Jensen for Lincoln City was second. 19 clean sheets and 42.2% uh, clean record. And Will Norris, uh, 19 clean sheets and 41.3% uh, clean, uh, clean sheet record. So that's the kind of area that we're going to be looking at when we bring in a new keeper. But for me... Definitely a new keeper coming in, young, progressive, confident on the ball and inevitably a good shot stopper. I think we need more than one, Matt. I mean, obviously, if John Ruddy doesn't uh, sign that um, contract offer, which I agree with you, uh, again, my personal opinion is I don't think he will. Uh, but um, Etheridge, Neil Etheridge has gone. 
Ruddy would have gone. We've only got Bradley Mayo as the uh, goalkeeper that's left, and he's a young lad. And my gut feeling is that uh, he'll probably be sent out on loan, possibly. Um, so I think we're going to need two goalkeepers. And the same criteria that you've mentioned, I think we're going to need um, maybe 24, 25, to up to 28 years old, so in the prime of their in their careers. Uh, but I think for the style of player that uh, Chris Davies will want to play, it's going to have to be a ball player as well. And we, I think I think most Blues fans would agree that that's exactly what we need. I think the modern goalkeeper has to be a ball player. I mean, look at, I mean, the Euros are going on at the moment. Look at Jordan Pickford for England. He, he plays through the ball through to Kane. And all, yeah. you know, the modern keeper is now expected to do assist in the game just as well as shot stop in the game. And yeah. you know, with modern football, we play out from the back now. The keeper's in an, integ- an integral part of that because the, the defenders get in trouble. Their natural default is to go back to a keeper. And if they're strikers handing down on them they need to be confident on where to ping it and where to put it so yeah. um, I think a young when I say young as you say I think you've hit the mark there somewhere between 24 and 28 a little bit of experience under yeah. the belt but someone who's progressive confident and can um, yeah I mean say, they, they, may, the they, they may go down the road of getting somebody of that age and somebody a bit more experienced because to goalkeepers they can be a little bit sort of older yeah. still in their prime uh, I'm look at John Ridd I think he's 38 or 39 a very very experienced keeper uh, yeah. and if we keep him that will change things because the only thing about John Ruddy though I believe I don't know what you think that if we keep him I don't think he'll be the number one I don't, I don't either and I think that might, he, if he knows that he's not going to want to have the last season or few seasons of his career as a number two in League One, yeah. which is another reason why I think it'll potentially move on. But it'd be interesting to see what we do there. Because again, in the podcast, Ruddy said he feels good. He wants to carry on playing football. Why would he come into League One and possibly be a second goalkeeper? I think it's in the stars for him to go to someone like Blackburn or sort of a low-end championship team this season. But with that, in that spirit, I think definitely a new goalkeeper. And as you say, Dad, if not two coming through the door this summer. But he, I think Ruddy acknowledged in that podcast with Ben Foster that um, with Rain, Wayne Rooney in charge, it's likely the January transfer window that Rooney would have bought a goalkeeper in. So he always knows in this system of forward play that yeah. Chris Davies wants to play, he's going to be vulnerable. I actually think you've hit the nail on the head. Mm. I think we'll see one about 24-28 who will be our first team uh, future, fu- bringing the club through the future. And we might see someone a little bit more experienced towards the end of their career who's there for the experience and that sort of ruddy, Yuki kind of style nature behind them. I almost see Yuki goal. <laughs> <laughs> Just his leadership. Although, although if he did go in goal, he'd still get the full support of the Blues fans. Yeah. Uh, well, he's tall. He'd probably be a pretty good keeper. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yuki, get your gloves ready, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then we, then we go on to um, defenders, Matt. So this is an interesting area as well, isn't it? So what's your thoughts on um, what will happen in the transfer window in terms of our back line? So if I just go through the back line quickly, yeah, yeah, please, I think yeah. Buchanan left backs is, if he stays, happily uh, Buchanan's left back position. Laird right back, again, if he stays, happy with Laird. He had a bit of an underwhelming end to the season, but he's a good, decent right back, happy with that. And Bielek, again, I don't know how 100% or how close to being confirmed this is, but I've been hearing that he's actually happy to stay at Birmingham and he wants to fight in League One to get us back to the championship. Yeah. So if he becomes our centre-half, I would be absolutely buzzing with that. He's an absolutely incredible centre-half. I'd love to see Bielek uh, become the captain. Uh, However, I would also like to see another centre-half come through the gate uh, because I think the spine of the team is absolutely crucial. So, you know, your centre-half, your centre-mid to your attacking mid to your striker and your your goalkeeper, the spine is absolutely crucial. So if we can get another solid centre-half with Christian Bielek alongside... and I I I think this is is a really important area because um, in League One, we're going to get a lot of high balls played into into our box. We're going to have to defend um, set-pieces a lot better than we did in the Championship. Um, I agree with those players. I think Buchanan is nailed on as a left back. Uh, I think now that Cody Drama has, uh, you know, obviously gone back to his parent club on loan, it leaves it free now completely. So you would argue that Ethan Laird is a nailed on right back. But again, you've got to remember, Matt, as well, that uh, it's a long season. So we need backups as well. So it isn't just about that. Because obviously, if Buchanan or, or Laird gets injured, we need to have people to come in to replace them as well. Obviously, we haven't mentioned Sanderson yet as well, Dion Sanderson. Yeah. Uh, I think from his message that he put on Instagram that he really wants to stay. Nice to hear. But, you know, I think a lot of uh, Blues fans are um, sceptical about him and uh, in terms of what he performed last well, season. We're, we're rumoured, and again, rumours at the moment, uh, with, with Helic from Huddersfield. Very dominant in the, in the air. He scored a lot of goals in the Championship last season. So he, I think, imagine him and Bielek are centre-half. Yeah. That would be a really, really solid, uh, solid yeah. partnership. Yeah. And also there's a player, 
I really like someone called Ronnie Edwards from Peterborough. He's been, re- I think he's probably been, if not the highest or second highest rated defender okay. this year for aerial battles and just, he just dominates at centre back. And again, I'm not saying we should go ahead and get him. I'm just saying a player like that. I yeah. think I'd love to see another combative, really strong centre half. And genuinely, I know we need backups in positions for injuries, but just as a starting back line, Buchanan, Laird, uh, Bielek, and let's say it was uh, Helic or Edwards, that's a solid back line for, the, for League One, in my opinion. Um, yeah, but again, still needs backup, doesn't course it? Course it does. I, I, I think this is a really important position. I think there was a few games or a few parts of last season in the Championship where we had, we, we had real problems with injuries and suspensions, and we had to have players fitting in. I think even did Cody Drama play at centre half one game? Buchanan and I mean, did. Buchanan did as well. So, so there was a very, very light we were in that area. So I think we're going to need. I think we're going to need to see you know two, at least two or three it, through the door yeah. in that area. Um, because I just think that it's such a crucial area and if we do get injuries this is a very physical league which we know we need strong players in that but that's a really good point I want to see us bring in players like Buchanan like Drama who can who can do other sides of the defence as well so Buchanan could go in centre half Drama could go in centre half Laird can play right wing I think when you're getting in these players it's important to think of not just the sole position that you're looking to recruit or to back up think about other areas of the pitch which they, which yeah. they could become useful as well because you know red cards could happen we get injuries all sorts, you know, in a, in a season of football, it's a long old road, isn't it? Not even to quote our song uh, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> in, in, intentionally there, but uh, it, is, it is a long yeah. old season, so we need support all over the pitch as well. Uh, not just defenders, but I think in all positions, we need more height and physicality yes. across the team. So any anybody that we're talking about in whatever position, uh, obviously goalkeepers are normally six foot plus, otherwise it'd be, it'd be, obviously you need someone a little bit taller that can win those crosses, etc. So I think we have to take it as red that the goalkeepers are going to be pretty... F- physical and tall, I don't hope so anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so therefore, any other position we talk about, whether that's defence in midfield or up front, we know that last season we were a very small team compared to our opposition and we had lacked that physicality, which is another mm-hmm. factor that got uh, relegated. So, I mean, how many times that were the players lining up? I mean, you literally said next to each other, how small does our team look compared yeah. to theirs? We yeah. look tiny yeah. and I completely agree, we need to improve that next, and next I think year. The, I think the defence is a place where you do need physicality and height. And centre mid is a big one as well. Yeah, you need, so... You need to have that battlers in the middle of the park and that brings us on nicely to uh, the midfield then, Dad. And because I've started the last two, let's hand it over to you. What, what, what are your thoughts on the midfield? Right, okay, the, mid, the midfield's a, a big one because we know last season we, we, we had a, a big squad and a lot of it was down to the amount of midfield we had. We, we brought in three midfielders in the January transfer window and we couldn't get rid of any. So I think we'll see a shrinking of the amount of midfield. And we already have, haven't we? Because players have uh, have gone. Obviously, lots of Sunic has, yeah. uh, has gone. Obviously, heavily rumoured that JJ will go, and that's still highly speculated think, yeah. um, uh, as well. Um, but but across that um, area, it's 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 now a case of bringing in players that will suit the style of player that Chris Davis wants mm-hmm. to play. I hope we keep Pake. Yeah. I've also heard just to add to the rumour mill as well. Pritchard is looking for a move back to the Championship as well. So it looks like we might move, uh, uh, lose Pritchard again. It's very, hard to very, no, Very it? loose rumours. The transfer market only opened last Friday. Please take all this with a pinch of salt, Blues fans. It's just what I've been reading on social. There's a lot of fake accounts out there and a lot of speculation. So I wouldn't, I would, I, until it actually happens, I wouldn't actually pay any kudos course, to that whatsoever. If I was Pritchard, I'd be wanting to, whether you know he wants to move or whatever, I'd be wanting to prove myself in the club because he hasn't done anything yet. No, he hasn't. You know, he's literally uh, came in injured. And, you know, the games he's played, he hasn't been that noticeable. Ineffective. So, therefore, he's got a lot to prove. I'd like to think we could keep him because I think he could be a, a, a good weapon in the yeah. um, in the in League One. Because, yeah. you know, I know what we've seen at Sunderland, if he could get to those levels in League One, it'd be absolutely brilliant. So, we'll, we'll, we'll keep yeah. that on the back burner about him at the moment. I was going to say, I, I, I cut you off there, Dad. You are about to say something about Paik. Yeah, I was, I was saying about, I hope we keep him. Uh, and he's another player that uh, we did a video um, about a month ago on which players we think are at risk of potentially leaving. He was one of them. Because because he's a South Korean international and obviously playing in League One is not going to do his CV much good from international purposes. Same with Miyoshi, really. Um, but I'd like to see Paik because I think we saw early glimmers of him. Uh, he went off the boil um, and was, you know, maybe not playing at his best, I think you, you would easily say, towards the end of the season. But I think if we could get like um, some coaching from Chris Davis to him, and the and the rest of the coaching team, he he has the ability to be a a player that we've already got that potentially will suit the style of what we want to do. Yeah, so I'm, I hope we can keep him. I if Paik can up his physicality because there was a couple of games at the back end of last season, like the Rotherham game and the Huddersfield game, he was just getting pushed off the ball too easy. Yeah, uh, but in terms of 
his playing style. I think he's exactly what we need. Front footed, gets the ball up the pitch. He's never looking backwards. He's always looking forwards. He's looking for the attacking. He's, a, he's, he's more of an attacking, passing minded yeah. player. And then I'd like to see him lined up with an absolute pit bull, you know, really physical. And again, talk, coming back to that spine of the team, if we if we just assume Chris Davis, because if we work off the back of last season, we play that 4 2 3 1. Those two centre uh, two centre midfielders there at the back. Pake is a really good option. Don't get me wrong, I really like him. Hope he stays. Then on the other side, I'd like to see your what what do we always reference that? Your Stephen Carr's, your uh, Robbie Savage's, yeah, yeah. your, your, your Roy yeah. Keynes, those absolute grafters and battlers in the middle of the park. Because what do we always say as well? League one, physical league, you are literally going to get booted off the park. So if yeah. we can get a real physical centre midfielder, I think we'll uh, we'll win in as well. Just again, I know rumour mill, uh, we are linked with Mark Leonard and Scott Twine. Again, I know they're all just rumours at the moment, but they're uh, potential midfielders. I mean, Le- Leonard is the a classic centre mid and Scott Twine's more your attacking uh, mid- yeah. midfielder. Um, but yeah, for me, I'd like to see someone like Paik, if it's not Paik, definitely front-footed, uh, progressive passing forward and then like an absolute pit bull in the middle of the park who just gets stuck in a bit like a Sunjic but not well, like I was going to mention but, him like, but not I, like I think, a bull in the china shop a bit more uh, yeah, a bit more calculated yeah, I, th- I think um, he's left a gap Sunjic in terms of um, the, the type and style of play we need so we do need a midfield we need a combative midfield that will break up play we call him a disrupt Sorry, we call him a disruptor, yeah. and um, he. We need a Sunjic, but somebody who is a better ball distributor, as you've already mentioned. But you, you tend to get two types of uh, defensive midfielders. You get your Sunjic, your Robbie Savages, who just run around like a headless chicken, and then you get your more calculated, aggressive midfielders, like your Ben Shee from Coventry, your Harry Winks from Leicester. They're very, very good defensive midfielders, but they know how to turn the transition on, so they can get you from defence to attack in, that's a, what we want. in a microsecond. Number two, yeah, and, and, yeah, and that's yeah, what you yeah, want, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So you. you I, I would rather have that more calculated, intelligent midfielder than your headless chicken Sunjic that, running around. Yes, that, but that's what I'm saying. I, yeah. I, I'm saying Sunjic had left a gap. I don't want to play exactly like no, him. Exactly. No, exactly. We, we need the person that's physical and can break up play, but can have the vision to uh, think progressively forward and put a ball through as well. Yeah. Harry Winks is a brilliant example of the type exactly. of style of player. The, I, the, I always the, think you the know, link go, up he does is absolutely yeah. Fantastic. Going back to style of player that well, I'm talking, I'm talking yeah. about like a Kante in his best days at yeah. Chelsea. Yes, that, that yeah. style of player. Um, who can actually contribute to the forward nature of the team, but also, when needed, can actually disrupt and help the defence as well. Yeah. So it's a box-to-box midfielder yes, who, can, uh, who can who can actually do that. So I think that's a, a big gap. Just, uh, we haven't spoken about this as well in mid, but what about wide players? What's your thoughts on... Um, do we need any more wide players or have we got enough in this team? I think we do. Well, again, depending on the transfer market, you know, Bakuna is going to be hot for a championship move possibly. Um, you know, we've got Miyoshi again. The rumour mills are all circulating about whether these players will stay. But if, let's just say we keep our current squad, you know, Bakuna's a decent player. Uh, Miyoshi is a good player. I still think we need a bit more creativity because we have Dembele, uh, Bakuna, who are very good on their day, but they're very inconsistent. Keshi Anderson. Keshi Anderson. Yeah. And I tell you what, I'd like to see some of the youth players be given more of a chance here as well yeah. I'd love to see George Hall get more minutes on the pitch I'd love to see Ramal Donovan get a couple more minutes Alfie on the Chang. pitch Alfie Chang Alfie Chang's your more uh, uh, sort of defensive midfielder I, I think uh, we'll so, see I think he'll play a big part next season Alfie I think Chang. he will yeah, because um, yeah, he, he's already somebody we've got that has the ability obviously he's, he's coming back off quite an in, a bad injury but he's going to have a full pre-season with Chris Davies and uh, if he can make his mark in pre-season I think we could see he, he could be that you know, ball to ball midfielder that we're talking about that yeah, could, uh, be. could break up play. You know, the the, the Sunjic replacement, but with more vision. Yeah. We'll have to see. Obviously, it's all it's all whether or not and how he adapts to the style of play that Chris Davies actually won. Yeah. You mentioned a few names that we've been linked with, so obviously they'll come into the mix as well. But for me, wide, it is really, this is really uncertain part of the transfer window for me because the, 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 they're the players I think that the 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 likes of uh, Bakuna, uh, definitely Miyoshi uh, and Dembele that may be either sold or moved on potentially one, one of those three won't be here when the season starts almost guaranteed yeah. you know? but, but you're right you know it's too there's too much in the air at the moment to really nail down whether we'll have these players or not so yeah. me and you can sit here and go if the current squad is exactly as it is when the season starts we'll probably be okay but if we end up losing three or four players we're obviously going to have to have a massive recruitment drive so it's really hard to say at the moment but I would say I, I quite like Keshi Anderson on, on his day yeah. I think and I think in League One he gives you the physicality other players don't he does more kinney 
does get stuck in. He knows League One. He knows League and, One. And, uh, and I, I, I think that uh, you know uh, the club taking up his option for the extra year is a really positive thing, and I think he is in League One. He has an opportunity now with that option to prove himself to obviously get a longer contract. Yeah. But I think he's, he's I, definitely one. You know, we could have sold him, and then we'd have had another gap to yeah. fill. So we, we, it seems pointless I'd, doing that. I think I'd like to see a more physical flair player. So you know, you've, we've got Sariki Dembele, but we all know he doesn't do the ugly side of the game. He doesn't track back. He loses the ball quite. He can't. On his day, he can be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Let's just call it what it is. I'm not just giving all the negatives, but I would love to see a more physical version of him. You know, a flair player who's not scared to get stuck in, not scared to do the dirty work, and can take it around someone. And, and yeah, because creativity in League One is going to be key. Because pe- teams are going to be coming to St Andrews and, and parking the bus, and and we're going to have to break them down. So we're going to need and rely on those creative players a lot. So yeah. we are going to need them. A player I'm a real fan of is um, I don't know how to say his first name. I think it's Karamako or Karamako uh, Dembele from. Um, he, he's been on loan at Blackpool this season yeah. someone like him young fast similar to Dembele um, but I think he's got more assists and goals in him than Dembele has so someone like that might work really nicely um, but for me I have no doubt we'll recruit in this area of the attacking midfielder until yeah. we see the transfers coming in and out it's hard to tell yeah, uh, yeah I think, I think that's there. the area of the pitch where we will see more I think we'll see more sold or more leaving the club than actually coming yeah because obviously yeah. we got we, could, we, we knew after the January transfer window, we had too many midfielders uh, yeah, so, isn't it? so, so that, I think that automatically tells us if they, if we've been linked with midfielders, some of them are going to go that are, that are currently there. Yes, but we're, but uh, you know, I, again, comes back to the same point we made, Matt. You know, you need physical, taller players in there as well, whoever they are, um, just to give us that bit more of a presence on the pitch as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so then that brings us on to our forwards. Um, oh, we're going to again. Sorry to jump the gun and <laughs> we give you an explanation, but we're going to. I think we're going to see two, three, maybe four forwards come through the gates because at the minute, what we've got Tyler Roberts, Tyler Roberts, and, and Yuki, and Yuki, it, Yuki, Yuki if he signs, yeah. indications are that he's likely to, but he hasn't yet at the time of recording. Um, so we were left with Tyler Roberts. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> I think we need a few more. Uh, uh, well, uh, let, give me I, your thoughts first, Matt. I, I think we'll see at least three come through the door. And I, I stand by this. I don't think we ever replaced Kevin Phillips and Cheshire Adams. Those two strikers, are they sum up the last 10, 13 years for me of the best strikers we ever had. And, yeah. and they were prolific goal scorers, really good... Um, link up play with Yuki Shea Adams had a really good relationship with him and and really played some nice football. Kevin Phillips is Kevin Phillips, just an out and out goal scorer. So we yeah. need someone who's going to absolutely bring in what 25, 26 goals this season. You know, last year's top goal scorer was someone called Alfie May who played for Charlton. I know Huddersfield are in for him at the minute, but um, there's two trains of thoughts in this as well. Some some fans are saying let's go for someone like Longstaff who plays for Notts County, but I believe he's just signed a new contract, so that's going to be harder. But someone in the lower league who has a track record, and then some people are saying let's get a slightly older, more experienced championship player who we know um, is, is going to bring us uh, quite a few goals next season. But I think we're going to see three or four, and I think we're going to see a mixture. We'll see some physical players come through the door, and we'll see some short, uh, nippy, flary kind of strikers as well. But yeah. I don't know who we're going to bring in. I haven't heard many rumours for forwards yet, but uh, it's going to be an interesting one. For well, the, this was our problem last year. You know, yeah, we, we were, it was it was it, glaringly obvious that we were light, and I think the fact that we didn't bring a forward in at least one forward in the January transfer window was uh, a, a major. It's criminal fault. in the it, end, right? It, it was know. a major fault. I think that you know the. The uh, club are going to look for younger forwards because we've made the mistake in the past where our forwards have been doing. You know, we had like you know we've had Hogan, Jukovic, mm. Troy Deeney when he was there, all thirty plus and you know towards the end of their careers. Yeah. That, uh, that that that's not going to win you or score you loads of goals because you know uh, you need you need players with with pace. Yeah. So I think we're going to we'll be going for younger players. Oh, we were linked with that striker from MK Dons. Oh, I forgot his name. He's a young lad. I think he scored quite a few goals last season. He got a red card in the last game of the season, so he's going to go into the new season with a three match ban. Oh, what's his name? Anyway, we've been linked with him, but he he kind of fits the description you've just you've just described. Young hot prospect. Yeah. Um, and I agree. I think I I think we'll see a balance. A bit like the Ruddy and the goalkeeper situation. I think we'll see a few, uh, maybe a striker come in who's young, flary, really got a bright future. And we might see someone who's a bit more experienced to stay, st- steady the ship, yeah. who you know you can bring on a 65, 70, 75 minutes and they're going to give you a solid performance. You know what you get. Yeah. And I think we'll see the, the balance of those two worlds. But this is such a key, critical role, uh, 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 role position for us to fill. I mean, mm. you've been supporting the Blues a lot longer than me, Dad. We. <laughs> In my 33 years, I don't think we've ever, we've ever been a massively exciting goal, 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 goal kind of team, have we? We've always been that work hard, fight, determination, grit kind of team, haven't we? That's just the roots of the club. That's the style of football we often play. So I would love to see that shift now with Chris Davis and for him to bring in some 
really exciting young talent, ping it in from 25 yards, three, four goals, you know, just absolutely exciting talent going forward. But I think so. I think we'll also see Junior Dixon this season as well. Yeah, Junior I think, Dixon, I think yeah. he will um, he will get some game time, um, see how he goes, because uh, you never know how these young players are going to react. But I, I think we're going to see three or four forwards coming through the door. I think yeah. most of them will be younger, you know, maybe, again, like we mentioned for, you know, uh, um, centre-halves, 24 to round about, I don't know, 28, something like that. Yeah. Because that's what we need. That's what we've lacked for years is, is, the, is the age is always the key factor that's uh, resulted in us not scoring many goals. Yeah. So big changes there, I think, uh, up front because there has to be because we haven't got any. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, because you, you, you can look at defence, you can look at midfield and even goalkeeper and you could, oh, actually goalkeeper similar to striker, but, you know, we have options but we need support roles and we need mm. more, possibly more physicality and more aggression and more passion but striker, we have to fill because we have two options. One of one of, one of which is 36, 37. So, we have to get a few decent strikers to the door, don't we, this summer? Yeah. Uh, well, one final point for me: massive yeah. opportunity for Tyler Roberts. Yeah. You know, he he has got uh, this season now, I believe, to um, show us what a player he can be. Yeah. Because let, if he let's does ignite that Coventry form for the for the yeah. whole season, he'll be just he'll he'll get on just yeah. fine. Yeah. Hopefully, he can stay injury free. But if he doesn't have an absolutely amazing season, I can't see him. Um, you know, being at the club too long because uh, we need. I, I think he's got it in him. I, I really do. I think if he can get a good run in the side, confidence, he just needs he confidence. He needs goals. Uh, so we'll have to see what he does there. But as you can see, Matt, from my perspective, I think that um, we need obviously certain types of players. And uh, it's not just about their ability. They've got to look at the character of these players as well. Mm -hmm. We need players who have got the right attitude, want to play as a team, and we need a strong captain. 100%. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And I would like to see Bielek as the captain yeah. amongst the current yeah. uh, squad. If we bring someone in who's an absolute animal, by all means, hand them the captain's armband. But at the moment, with the players we have, I think Bielek's a really good option yeah. for captain next season. Yeah. Um, and Chris Davis came out and said in his interview, he wants to win and he doesn't want to win with bad players, bad attitudes. And that highlighted to me how he's going to change the culture of this club this summer. Yeah, so which is desperately needed, isn't it? 100%. Yeah. 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 So you've just heard our thoughts, Blues fans. What are your thoughts? Are you excited for the transfer window ahead? As we say, the uh, it only opened on Friday, just gone at the time of recording. So I'm sure we're going to see a lot of players come and go over the course of this season. But what do you think? Do you agree with some of our opinions? Do you have some thoughts uh, of your own? Please let us know. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, check us out on our social media channels and our X page and Instagram page uh, is popping up on the screen right now. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any future content. And me and Dad will see you on the next video all about Birmingham City.